Hey there, this is Ralf Breininek from Pixelasm.com with some behind the scenes info on the projection mapping test I did. As the title says, this video is not a tutorial on how to set up a projection mapping or a Cinema 4D scene with Octane. Instead, it's a rough overview of some of the techniques I used. But I hope there will be some useful tips for you or at least some hints to point you in the right direction. I would like to start this video with the Beamer setup itself, then go through the Cinema 4D scenes and after that show you the compositing in After Effects. In the end, I'm going to play back a comparison of the exported rendering and the film projection. But before that some info about me and why I did this test in the first place. I'm a freelance interface and motion graphics designer from Cologne, Germany and always curious about new hard and software to speed up my workflow. That's why I bought a beta license of Octane in mid-2013 and was thrilled to see its first official release as plugin for Cinema 4D later on. For those of you who haven't heard about Octane, it's a GPU-based physical renderer, or in short terms, it's like Cinema 4D's physical renderer but on high speed, sometimes taking only seconds for what C4D needs minutes or even hours. Unfortunately, I haven't had time to dive deeper into it and did not want to risk using Octane on client jobs without further testing. But in early 2014 I finally had some spare time left and thought about doing some projection mapping tests. So why not use Octane and get to know its shaders and lights better too. So let's start with the model setup. Here you can see the RC model I spray painted white and masked the rims with circular paper cutouts so that the animation of the projected rims would be visible too. For the floor and the back I used laminated wooden boards which I got from my nearest hardware store. Right in front I placed a motorized slider with a Manfrotto fluid head which were kindly lent to me by Frank Erner, a people and landscape photographer from Cologne whose portfolio link you can find in the description. Attached to the slider is a controller for dollying, which unfortunately is not that smooth on starting and stopping transitions but at least the fluid head helps on smoothing the panning. For the projection I used an old Epson TW700 beamer which can project 720p or small HD as I like to call it. Because of the large free play of the lens shift hardware on this beamer it is really tedious to set up when it comes to pixel perfect projection. In the end I did a lot of stills to get the angle and position of the car just right for the small scale. So in order to distinguish and keep track of the sometimes minor changes, I added those big letters to the test files. Let's take a look at the Cinema 4D scenes finally. One question I got a lot was, if I move the car or the scene? Well, as you can see here, I moved the scene and locked the position of the car and the camera, not only because that mimics the real world setup, but also because it is the easiest to maintain over different scene files. Like most Cinema 4D users, I'm a huge fan of MoGraph and Instances. Unfortunately though, Octane as of now is not able to render Instances within Instances. So I had to turn some of them off for the final render. But for this video's sake, I turned them back on and deleted the cloth simulation because it's pretty much straightforward anyways. So I guess the first interesting thing might be the car pan transitions, which I did by moving several explosion effects deformers on the x-axis. This deformer also has a thickness setting so you don't need an additional cloth surface object as a workaround to give flat polys thickness. For the exterior I built just a tiny part of the road with one of those light arcs, which I instantiated via MoGraph and animated its offset to save on memory.
The same principle was applied for the cave, which I built by using a lot of skewed boxes for the walls and a variant of the light arc. For the crystals I used a capsule and for the pillars a cylinder primitive, both with low poly settings so that they only have six edges. And that's it for the first scene, for which I will show the transition to the next scene in After Effects after I got through the rest of the Cinema 4D files. For the underwater tube I used an extruded arc with the already mentioned cloth surface workaround to give the glass some thickness. The ocean's floor was done using a landscape primitive, which in this case was easier to handle and more responsive than a displaced plane with high subdivisions. The tech scene is made up of simple cubes and cylinders for the walls, and extruded end sides for the floor. Looking at the work files now, I could have used a displaced plane for the floor instead of MoGraphed hexagons, because in the end I did not animate them as I wanted to in my early concepts. I did not use any kind of rig because the car had to stay put most of the time anyways. I only keyframed the car's body rotation to mimic the suspension giving in when the car stops. For the wind tunnel aerodynamic visualization I used thinking particles which I then traced and added a sweep to so that I had geometry to render. Because Cinema 4D's hair shader wasn't supported by Octane until they released version 2 some weeks ago. So it now supports hair, displacement mapping, object motion blur, rounded edges and some more tools for better workflow and results. But let's get back to those thinking particles, which for sure are not as physically correct as fluid sims like RealFlow, Turbulence FD and such, but at least come free with the studio version of Cinema 4D. Also, I did not need a complex simulation and therefore even the Expresso setup for the thinking particles is really simple. Just an emitter attached to those pylons moving up, a deflector which changes the particles material when they hit the car, and a wind node with high turbulence for some randomization. Although very simple to set up, a lot of people like the scene with the falling spheres best. By simple I mean it's just some spheres and a sink with rigid body dynamics as well as an explosion effects object on the car's body. So overall, there is very little geometry in the scene, which made it really responsive and fun to work with. And talking about simple, the last scene is even simpler because there are no simulations at all. It only contains the car and several instances of a tube I added bevels to. Whilst I keyframed the inner rings in a way that there is at least some movement on the screen at any given time, the outmost rings are only for the reflection of the horizon and the last specular wiping over the car's body. Well then, this was the last scene in Cinema 4D, so let's take a look at the minimal grading and compositing I did in After Effects. The most obvious thing I added in post are the car's lights and lens flares. I added them in artifacts not only because they produce some unwanted fireflies when rendered, but also because they can be adjusted way better in here. A nice side effect is that it seems like the cloth is somewhat translucent, plus it always marvels me how flat the image looks without the lights, especially in later scenes like this one. Also because of the changing light setups, the grill sometimes lost definition, so instead of giving it a constrained light setup for each scene, I just rendered it lit right once and overlaid it changing its opacity depending on the scene. I graded the car's body separately to make it pop and added a denoiser to smoothen the render especially on the windows. Although, for this video's sake I've deactivated the denoise effect, because it slows down artifacts quite a lot. But finding the right balance between the noise-free but longer render time 
and a grainy but shorter render with denoising in post can sometimes help to cut down on production time. Noise as well as lens flares are a matter of taste which can change even during a running project. So it's always good to be able to change effects in post without having to render the whole video again. Like the lens flares I use for the dawn, daylight and dusk part. But I guess everybody already is familiar with the optical flares plugin from Video Copilot. For the glowing crystals I did not render separate mats for each color, but instead used After Effects color gear to pull two mats from the hue value of the rendered images. That way I was able to give the reflections a glow too, but most importantly adjust the glow according to the specific hue, because one glow setup doesn't work as good for all hue and saturation values. The transition to the underwater scene was done quickly with an object based wipe although next time around I would pull a mat right from the beginning instead of masking by hand, even if it is a simple shape as this one here. Besides some grading, the scene contains light rays made out of an animated and masked turbulence noise, which I then skewed in 3D space. I also faked a Fresnel shader on the car's body to support the light rays and to give the model more volume. The tag scene starts with the wipe as well and has only minimal compositing like the grill, some color correction and later on glows for the traced particles. I did the glow of the falling light spheres in Octane itself instead of After Effects because it looks more natural and this scene because of its low poly count rendered quite fast anyways. So here again only the car's lights are added back in. Last but not least the closer scene wipes in, to which I added the glow in post. And talking about glows, something I almost forgot to mention is that I set the comp to 32 bit, which not just only makes the glows look better, but also makes them behave more natural when using curves adjustments. 32 bit comps give you better grading possibilities in general, also because banding does not occur that fast. And that's all about the projection mapping. So I'm going to end this video with a comparison of the rendered animation and the projected video. But if you've still got questions about the projection mapping or my other projects, which you can find on my portfolio website pixelism.com, feel free to contact me via Vimeo or my mail rb at pixelism.com. Thanks for watching and goodbye.